Once again, really delighted to extend a warm welcome to this Conference of Parties side event hosted by the Government of Mexico and the Women's Environment and Development Organization, WIDO. Today we're here to discuss how feminist foreign policy and human rights can be a pathway to climate justice. As we increasingly see governments adopt feminist foreign policies, this is a really exciting moment in time, and we appreciate your interest in this event. We're deeply grateful to all the panelists who are here today, who are joining us here at COP27, as we need to continue not just rising ambition and climate action, but making sure gender is at the heart of this. We are honored and delighted to have an amazing group of experts with us today. Minister Schreinemacher, Minister of Foreign Trade and Development Cooperation from the Government of the Netherlands, Minister for the Environment of Chile, who will be joining us shortly, as well as Julio Cordano from um, the Chilean Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Kay Harrison, Climate Change Ambassador from New Zealand, will also be joining, and Anna Lerman, Minister of State for Europe and Climate at the Federal Foreign Office from Germany. Alexandria Gordon, who's the program manager at the Women's Environment and Development Organization, and my own Deputy Minister Under Secretary for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights of Mexico, Marta Delgado Peralta. So without further ado, Mexico recognizes that tackling gender inequalities is an essential and critical element, not only for just societies, but actually for empowering women through improved healthcare, education, and representation in government. And all of this can actually help societies adapt more quickly and lead to positive impact on climate change. Advancing women and girls' rights will also advance climate adaptation and climate justice. In this sense, this conversation today is really set up to provide us with a space to analyze that disproportionate and gender differentiated effects that threaten women and girls due to climate change as well as the strategies and plans that governments, states, and civil society organizations have implemented at both the national and international level to ensure the well-being of women and girls. I would now like to give the floor to the Under Secretary for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights of Mexico, Marta Delgado. Now we you hear me. Thank you very much, Judith. Good morning. Um, I want to thank the NDC Partnership for hosting us today. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, it is an honor to share this uh, panel with representatives of the governments of Germany, Netherlands, Chile, New Zealand, and also with Judith Arenas, Senior Advisor of uh, APCO Worldwide, uh, and Alexandria Gordon, Program Manager, Director of Women's Environment and Development Organization. Uh, I think that uh, it, during the last week, we have been uh, constructing a lot of uh, discourses and also measures regarding the environment. But now, the following um, this week, the following week is important to talk about the transversality of many. Uh, matters that are important for climate change. One of them is the linkage between the gender and the climate uh, crisis uh, around the world. As you may know, Mexico uh, are reflecting uh, how to link, to make this link importantly in our feminist foreign policy. Uh, I do believe that this feminist foreign policy is contributing to the mitigation uh, of the crisis and uh, we are committed uh, to fully achieve uh, gender equality um, and we are constructing a network and, and alliances to allow us to share experience but also to um, raise their voices and be vocal around the, this matter. We uh, know all that more than 50% uh, around the world, we are women, and this diversity uh, has to be had a an human rights approach. Uh, is crucial to ensure sustainability, but also peaceful environment management. So, in this sense, within the framework of the United Nations Conference of the Parties on Climate Change, uh, Mexico has been key 
to the realization of uh, international agreements such as the new Lima Work Program on Gender and the Gender Action Plan within the framework of this conference of the parties, but also that started back in Madrid in 2019. So the centrality uh, of the agenda of human rights, rights uh, the intersectionality that we need to understand, the intergenerational equality. We, for example, are inviting uh, women, young women, to be part of our, not just our delegation, but our negotiators. Right now they are at the tables, and we are very proud of them. Also, for other young leaders, men, but the, we are especially proud of, of them, of, the, of these young uh, women. So, a uh, fair transition of the workforce from the perspective of gender equality and other issues we are promoting uh, with a lot of enthusiasm and, and, and commitment. So within this, uh, the framework of the COP26 that uh, Mexico impulsed back in Madrid, the Mexican delegation we have managed to include reference of uh, human rights, gender equality, the rights of indigenous peoples uh, in a cross-cutting manner of uh, uh, the negotiation of the topics of the forum, and in the same position was highlighted in the 56th session uh, of the subsidiary bodies at the United Nations Framework Conversion on Climate Change. So for this round, I have to say that this conference is very important for us, and I am so uh, excited of sharing this panel with my colleagues of other countries, because uh, the feminist foreign policy of, uh, in the world must uh, be a transversal focus, not just for climate, but for other multilateral affairs. Thank you so much, Vice Minister, and thank you for reminding us that gender really has to be at the heart. It's not about uh, mainstreaming, it's about making sure that we're dealing with full equality, so I appreciate those regards. Vice Minister Delgado, your thoughts on the need for a feminist foreign policy? I think that uh, my colleagues have said almost everything. I want to recall during the pandemics the, uh, all the bulk of the responsibility of uh, facing these relate in women, the teachers, women, the nurses, women, uh, the persons who, that at, at the end of the day took care of uh, elderly women, most of them, uh, the most died women, the most that lost the jobs, they were women too. So uh, if we are to really face a climate crisis with this kind of uh, inequality, uh, when our, we are facing crisis without tools, without the same rights, or without the um, enforcement of uh, our cultural approach of this problem, it is not going to be fair. Now, we uh, women, we need to not just to be at the front line of uh, responsibilities, but also at the front line of negotiations. We need leadership, you need equity in the participation of the negotiations. That's why Mexico, we have a team of young uh, leaders, women, uh, facing, uh, led by Camila Cepeda, our general director of Global Matters here at the COP. But also I think that uh, we need to diminish the uh, violence against women also as a result of this equity that we are facing about. You know, here at the COP, there are 3,000 NGOs registered. Just 30 of them are focused on gender. So we need uh, really to raise awareness on, on the importance of uh, the feminist foreign policy includes not just the position of the countries and in the women forum, but also in other forums as this climate, but also the economic forum, the uh, 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 more than 20, uh, 20 different uh, bodies of the UN that are, have sessions just this year the Biodiversity Summit, the Conference of the Parties at the end of the year, the Water Conference next year, etc. So that's what I have to add to my colleagues. Uh, and uh, I think that we need also to approach delegations to um, transmit the importance of the transversality mm -hmm. and gender's perspective in every uh, 
statement that the, the countries are posing here. Thank you so much for that challenge, uh, Vice Minister. I think you're absolutely right that this has to be integrated. And with 11 days to go to the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, very timely that you should remind us about the importance of tackling violence, which is often very much avoided from a lot of other discussions because it's deemed to be too sensitive. So I thank you for those, uh, those reminders of what we need to address. Um, Vice Minister Delgado, we'd love to just hear from you. You know, Mexico is today presenting its national gender program on gender and climate change. So how does this implementation look like from your perspective? Well, I have to say that it has been very challenging for, for us to gather all the governmental support and sensibility and uh, also the time and advocate uh, personal and analysis and this training which is instrumental in order for us to gain confidence but also an ambitious program for Mexico. Uh, I want to uh, accolade and uh, thanks uh, Dr. Christopher Ballinas here because uh, through the direction of uh, human rights we gain the uh, the, the, the good uh, job that we needed in order for presenting today the Mexican clim Gender and Climate Action Plan. So for us, uh, up today, it's important to gather the information and set the, the, the goals. But now on, we are going to, to be challenged for implementation, as well as the uh, new NDC of Mexico. So in order for, for us to, uh, have a, to succeed in, in the implementation of this plan, we need to really uh, make the good message, not just inside the government, but at the end of the day, this was born uh, at the international arena. As same as the climate change uh, struggle. Climate change started at the international arena in uh, Brazil when we signed up all these three conventions and then we landed these policies and interest at the local level or national level. So uh, in the same way, we need to land in the national plans the need of having this approach on the linkage of um, women's rights, gender's perspective and climate change. And allow me just to mention that I was a uh, very young when I started participating at the Conference of the Parties. But one was very special. The fifth, I attended the fifth uh, COP in Bonn uh, in, back in 1998. Back then, we, are, we NGOs, I was part of NGOs, the CAN, the Climate Action Network, we launched the Fossil of a Day. The Fossil of a Day was a prize for those countries that doesn't endorse the reduction of emissions of uh, back then the CDM or other policies. We need to raise also awareness on the countries that are not supporting women participation and women engagement and women language at the climate negotiations. So I think that this is very important um, highlight what obstacles we are facing in this, in this way, because we are not facing this just in the climate negotiations. We are facing this blocking uh, at the international forests. So it will be interesting for NGOs, for example, to recall that prizes or that way of uh, highlighting the lack of commitment of the countries for women's rights. Well, it's very encouraging to see someone that started in civil society and that has been at every COP to then move on and be in this position where you're driving policy implementation and change. So very inspirational for all of us. And um, I think this stark reminder of the fact that we are facing a backlash on women's rights. You know, we've seen this. We, we know the data tells us that the pandemic was worse for it. We rolled back on progress made on the SDGs 
So it really is important to remember this. And as someone who was um, called out at Beijing Plus Five for having done that, I fully endorse the need to remember those who are not, who are blocking and calling out red lines on gender, because we need to hold those delegations accountable. Um, and primarily, thank you to Mexico for hosting this interesting conversation on gender and climate change, looking at it from a human rights and an intersectionality approach that will hopefully lead us to a more just and sustainable society. And thank you to all of you for joining us. And I believe we have a group photo now. Thank you so much, everyone.